Hello and welcome to the video. So this is something that I've been wanting to do for a while. It's tiers of automatic dive watches and um, five tiers specifically. Now obviously, um, you know, tiers in inverted commas are an artificial concept. There's no rules governing this, but I think there are clear um, uh, concessions regarding, you know, brand and model superiority of which we'll see a few examples of this here and I've arbitrarily selected five uh, levels um, these are fairly well defined I think in terms of stepping up from one uh, level to the next so they're all dive watches they all have screw down crowns and case backs they all have unidirectional rotating bezels with minute markings uh, loom of various quality and brightness uh, and um, they're all made of non-corrosive metals, which usually we're, we're talking about stainless steel, but you know, the example on the right here uh, does have solid coal. So what do we have here? Starting from the left, the Invicta Pro Diver, this is the 9094 in blue, uh, a 40 millimeter watch. Next up, Seiko XKX, this is 007 black, uh, black dial, black bezel, uh, 42 millimeter. Next up is the Oris Aquastate, uh, black bezel blue dial 43 millimeter Omega Seamaster Professional uh, 41 millimeter watch uh, in blue and this one is uh, the Submariner the Rolex sub uh, uh, 16613 obviously I, I would have liked to get my hands on the ceramic uh, 116610 for a more modern uh, stainless steel comparison Okay, so starting from the left, I think it's really quite amazing what, what Invicta can do uh, at this level, you know, at this real low price level. I mean, they have a ridiculous MSRP of 315 US, but really you can get this for 80 US dollars. Um, you know, admittedly a basic uh, Seiko NH35A uh, movement Nothing very special, in fact, very, uh, you know, really entry bottom level. Uh, it's manufactured, not Swiss, obviously, it, it's a Japan movement. It's, I think, manufactured in various places, Malaysia, Korea, uh, Japan itself, perhaps. I don't really know exactly which, you know, where this particular model is made, uh, but it's not going to be in, in Europe um, by any means. Uh, it's a 21,600 uh, beats per minute movement, 41 hour power reserve, 24 joules, definitely not uh, chronometer certified at this level. I uh, don't think there's any such thing actually at this level. Uh, sa uh, mineral glass, actually I'd be interested if there's any such thing as a sapphire glass for under, under $100 on the watch. Basic loom. Uh, it doesn't advertise anything more special than basic lum. It's not Lumi Bright uh, or Super Luminova or anything like that. The bracelet, fairly basic, but at least the links are solid. You know, I don't know whether this is actually 316 steel, but it's steel, it's solid. Um, it's push pins, it's pressed metal for the for the buckle. Right, nothing more special than that. No, there's no diverse extension, uh, and it's got hollow. And links but it does have a display glass back uh, for you know for that uh, that basic movement which you know you might say you know what's the point but you know they, they've they've put in an extra feature they've decorated the rotor there fairly you know decently but you know if it, uh, I think uh, they've made an effort there's nothing gold or anything more special than that so what do you get for this you get you get bang for buck you get a watch that you know, really, you can experiment on. I've, I've regulated this. You know, you feel free to open it on an eighty-dollar watch and play around with the movement and see what you can get in terms of getting the timing right. And I can get pretty good results. You know, it's running probably plus one second a day on average after some timing. Okay, next tier up. You know, is there a better representation of the two hundred to two fifty dollar? price range. I don't know what the MSRP on this is, but I think it's around 450, but you can realistically get this for between 200 and 250 USD. The Seiko SKX, um, 
it's it's a better movement a very reliable movement that's been around for many years and proven and this is Seiko 7s26 again 21600 beats per minute 40 hour power reserve definitely not as chronometer but what do you expect it is lumi bright or at least in modern uh, the newer models are as far as my reading tells me uh, so a better loom it's hard lex crystal which you know from all uh, sources i've looked at is a harder crystal than typical mineral glass but it's not sapphire again um, you know steel bezel the bracelet this is this is not the original bracelet the original bracelet uh, it, i've changed it over to to another seiko this is the original base that it comes in and it's quite disappointing. It's pressed metal. You can see the folds there. Uh, pressed metal uh, deployment, obviously. Again, no driver's extension. Um, and, uh, and hollow end links, uh, as you would expect uh, in, you know, in this price range. What do you get for this? I think you, I think you get a better brand. Soko is a more, you know, it's just really quite uh, a brand that's been around for many many years it's got lots of uh, involvement it's got prestige get better craftsmanship i mean look at the case look at that case back you know it's it's definitely a step up um, and you get reliability i mean these have been known to go for 10 15 years without any servicing and still keep fantastic time what are the competitors at this range? Well, you know, I think obviously the Orient ones, the, the Mako, the Ray, uh, and other notable ones would be the Citizen Pro Master, which you probably, it's quite difficult to get your hands on one now, uh, the, the automatic version. Next up, now we're getting into entry level Swiss. And, you know, I this is my choice really. I, I couldn't choose a better watch for this price range now. The, the MSRP in US is 1850, 1850. Uh, I think realistically you could get your hands on this for 1400, maybe even lower and definitely lower from a gray retailer, uh, you know, around 1100. What are the competitors at this level? We're talking Rado D Star 200, Longines Hydro Conquest, Christopher Ward Trident, and perhaps, uh, you know, other things like Squale, 50 Atmos, lots of examples, lots of really good watches, but this is my choice for this. You know, I, I, I got this myself. Um, you're getting Swiss made, you're getting a Solita SW200-1 movement, which is which is a clone of the Edda 2824. Beats at the full 28800 uh, at, you know, at the typical Swiss level. Um, 38 hour power reserve, this is not a chronometer, but you can get examples of chronometers at this price range. Uh, maybe not dive watches. I'm not aware of any dive watches at this price range. There are chronometers, but I don't know if, for example, Tissot uh, have, have some chronometer level watches at this price range and below. You get Super Luminova for the Lume. Sapphire crystal, and in this case, uh, you know, a, a nice soft dome sapphire. Um, it's it's a, it's a ceramic bezels. I mean, yes, you get some watches who still use uh, steel um, or aluminium bezels, but this is a ceramic insert, so that's a step up. And you're getting you're getting a solid bracelet with with I guess you don't really get end links in the Oris, but you expect solid end links at this price range. Um, you know, so so what do you get at this at this level? You get Swiss made entry level. You get sapphire crystal. Uh, you get, you know, really notably better bezel build quality. You're getting, um, sorry, I forgot to show. Uh, these are screws, right? You're really starting to expect um, screws for the bezel uh, for for the bracelet links. Um, you know, yeah, you still get pins in some some brands, but you know, you're really starting to want to see screws here. Um, you get a really good bracelet build. I mean that that is solid stuff. Whereas you know, take it back to the Seiko SKX. You know it it's good, it's precise, but but there's play in it. It just doesn't feel there all the time. Um, and this, in this case, you still get the display back. Like I mean, this is a bit confusing. Some people have said that this is sapphire. Amazon lists this as sapphire, but 
Oris website says it's mineral crystals. So I think that is really what it is. You've got to believe uh, the manufacturer. All right, so that's what you're really getting at, at that middle level of the tiers here. Okay, stepping up, really getting into luxury, Swiss luxury. And at this level, I mean, again, I have, I wouldn't choose any other watch uh, apart from the Omega Seamaster Professional. You know, realistically, there are not that many direct competitors at this range. We were talking Breitling Super Ocean uh, and, and Tudor Black Bay. Th those are the two that really uh, come to mind. I mean, there are others, but I think those are going to be the two big ones. What do you get for this? You're getting, so uh, price, uh, US MSRP, 4,400. Uh, you, you're going to be able to get this for probably around 3,500 or, or, or less, and certainly less than 3,000 from a grey retailer if you if you want to go grey retail. Um, so, you know, I guess taking it back again from the Invicta to the Seiko, you're going three times in price from the Seiko to the Oris, about five times in price from the Oris to the Omega. Again, another three times or four times in price. Um, you're getting uh, a, <laughs> is it in-house? I guess that you can debate that to the cows come home, but you're getting an ETA 2892 high grade movement, um, heavily modified, of course, in this case with the coaxial escapement. Is it proven? Is it better? Who knows? You know, it's been around for a few years now. I think they've sorted out the early issues um, and they, Omega at least, believe that it's, you know, there are some advantages over the traditional escapement. Uh, it beats at 25200. Uh, they've reduced it a bit, you know, to three and a half hertz, hopefully to, to make it uh, work a bit better. 48 hour power reserve, which is better than the typical ETA 2892 or 42 hours. Uh, and it's, it's chronometer, right? I think you're really starting to see more watches which are chronometer certified at this level. You're getting Super Luminova, you're getting a beautiful dome sapphire ceramic bezel with with a very special print actually. I don't know how they do this, but it's it's actually flush. It, it's not in, it, there's there's no engraved valley on this bezel like many other ceramics you might find. Um, you're getting one of the best bracelets in the business. All right, I mean you know this really is beautiful and and you know this you can see five obvious pieces but i can tell you between the five brush pieces you see that you see those uh those polished pieces those are separate pieces there's a play and you can feel they're separate so really each link is nine pieces a lot of work to go into that uh, to make this bracelet uh, Right, you're getting solid machined uh, deployments, you know, as opposed to the press deploy press metal deployments you've seen earlier. You're getting uh, very good quality uh, uh, diver extensions, you know, rock solid stuff, uh, and you're getting you're really getting a step up in craftsmanship. You know, I think you know people have compared the Oris to the to the Amiga in terms of quality and I think the steel quality no doubt is probably exactly the same as 316 surgical steel but you know I think there's no question there's a step up in craftsmanship when you when you're looking at Omega um, you know beautiful bezel that you're looking there and and really you know you, you I'll let it sit on my hand I'm sorry I haven't uh, put these on uh, all the time this needs to sit in properly uh, but, you know, getting very uh, nice looking watch that sits very nicely in the wrist and in 41 millimeter is beautiful. Okay, um, objectively, what are you getting for this? You're getting brand prestige of, oh, I guess that's, that's somewhat subjective, but uh, you know, you know, Omega's been around, they, they've got some big things under their, under their sleeve or, or uh, achievements that they've, they've had, you know, the, the, the man on the moon, obviously, first watch on the moon, uh, and major sponsors in, in various things, including the Olympic Games is 2016. 
Um, probably everybody who's watching a YouTube video would have watched some of the Olympics and they were everywhere. The name of media was everywhere in, in just about any event you can think of, even, even ones where time wasn't really that important. Um, you know, you're getting chronometer certified movement, you're getting a coaxial, uh, which is, which is something only Amiga would be putting up because they bought the patent. Um, you're getting, is it in-house? I guess you don't know. It's within the swatch group from ETA to Amiga. So you can, I guess, make your own decision on that. Um, and you're getting, you know, a step up in craft, particularly that bracelet. Okay. And lastly, is there a more iconic watch when it comes to divers? Is there a more iconic watch in the world, really? I mean, arguably, this is one of the most recognizable uh, watches in the world. Um, it's, you know, the, I guess the, the contemporary movement is a Rolex 3135, uh, 28,800 beats per minute, 50 hour power reserve, um, you know, chronometer certified, Rolex like to say superlative chronometer, and they claim plus or minus two seconds a day, which, you know, is better than the COSC um, uh, performance levels. And and whenever you, I've read reviews on Rolexes, they do seem to meet that performance. You're talking a US retail for the steel uh, watch of 8,550. Uh, reportedly, Rolex are not allowed to be discounted beyond 10% uh, or so and the the price typically you can get this for I think is just under 8,000 8, now I'm talking about 116610 I'm not talking about gold really really I'm, I'm talking stainless steel watches so it's just that this is the only one I could get my hands on um, what do you get for the loom the current Rolex use chroma light which i guess you can debate whether it's better than super luminova most people probably think it's not um uh you're getting a sapphire so of course a uh, ceramic insert for the modern ones this one's not this one's a, the pre-ceramic uh, you're getting a very solid bracelet which is very highly respected much tighter manufacturing than you know than the the invicta which obviously obviously homages the rolex uh, and and the modern modern deployment is is very nice. You know, I've I've never felt it, but you know that glide lock and the the double release or triple release, if you want to call it that, and solid machined pieces. I mean, this one leaves much to be desired. I mean, it does have a diver's extension, but I think the glide lock and solid pieces are uh, are definitely an improvement. You know, this is this is this was uh, the original uh, or the previous uh, generation of things. But you know, Rolex, what can you say about Rolex? You know, objectively, is it better than this? Well, you know, I've, there's none of the stats that I've listed are objectively better apart from the steel, which again is still controversial. I mean, 316 surgical steel, 904 surgical steel, which is harder, but technically more brittle. You know, is it better? Maybe people have said that you know they've they've not uh, treated their watches very well, and Rolex doesn't seem to scratch that easily. Maybe it is better, but but I think most people probably think it's just a marketing um, thing that Rolex have stepped up to use 904 more expensive steel since uh, I think the 80s. But you know Rolex, there is no bigger name, is there? I mean, in terms of uh, one single name of watches that just about everyone knows and what comes to mind when you think of watches you know the first watch on the top of everest you know they're, they're involved in yacht uh, records uh, south pole north pole wimbledon golf uh, you know formula one now they are everywhere and, and there's no bigger company really you're paying for brand prestige you're paying for a swiss manufacturer in-house movement with superb performance you know chronometer certified of course um, so you're paying for all those in you know almost intangible uh, uh, name things uh, which uh, you know people people value but uh, objectively is it a superior watch 
I, I, I don't know. I think you could, you know, a lot of people could potentially choose this, but, you know, talking about two, two and a half times the price for a bigger name, really. So that's what, that's what you're getting. That's the video. It's gone a bit long. Uh, thank you for persisting up to this time. If you've, if you've done that, I'll try to put a, a table uh, picture at the end of the video to summarize all the, the various findings and you can take a look at it. Thanks for watching until now and uh, um, hope you like it and find this informative and useful. Cheers.